Suppose I have here a string, a rope, like we have there. And I stick into that rope, I attach to the rope this wheel, just like so. And I let it go. Well, we all know it will happen. <laughs> Clunk. It's clear. All right. But now I'm going to spin it before I let it go. Where is the wheel? The wheel is here. So we'll spin it up, and then we'll put it in here. Notice the way I'm spinning it. I'm holding it away from me now. From now, I'm going to change it and do it differently next. There it goes. About 10 seconds. Isn't that amazing? And it rotates seen from below clockwise. Now it's going this way, and I'm going to redo the experiment, changing the direction of rotation, and then it will go the other way around. And now the angular momentum, is it rotating like this, is pointing here. Spin angular momentum is pointing like this. Torque. Is like this, and so the spin angular momentum is changing that, chasing that torque. I'm the spin angular momentum, I'm the torque. This is the torque. It's chasing it. All right, so I have this in my right hand. That's all right. And now I will. So when I spin it up. Let it first go around, which was roughly 10 seconds, what we calculated. And now I'm going to put 2 kilograms here at the end. And then you'll see an instantaneous increase in the precession frequency. You see, it goes much faster now. I take it off, and then it goes back to its roughly 10 seconds. So what I have done is, I have increased this torque, but not at the expense of M. Because the reason why the M cancels is because the moment of inertia has an M in it. But if I just hang this object on it, that doesn't change the moment of inertia of the spinning wheel. None of this is intuitive. None of this is intuitive.